All right. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Lawan Biddle and I am currently going for a degree, a bachelor's degree in fine arts game in fine arts and game animation and simulation. So are you guys ready? Now let's go. First, let's talk about my artistic influence. It is none other than the famous artist Leonardo da Vinci. I know it sounds may sound a little weird. It's like, wait, you're doing game animation and simulation. Why is this guy your artistic influence? Well, personally, he's one of my favorite artists in the whole entire world. He's well known. He did oil paintings and he was also scientific as well. And I drew inspiration from all of that because he was like an artist and a scientist. Two things you probably think wouldn't go together, but he made them work. And I took influence from that as in a way of saying, let me try to do some art and see what I can bring together that probably don't go together. And I found a really, I found out I really liked art in more ways than one. So I really thank him for that. And, and yeah, pretty much that guy there is the reason I am going for this degree. So let's go into my work. First, this is a caricature of my stepdad, Raphael Taylor is his name. I created this first on paper using markers and charcoal and you know a black colored pencil. It started off as black and white, but then I thought, hmm, this needs some color. Black and white doesn't really you know show a lot of emotion or anything. So I took it into Photoshop and added color to it. Gave it a yellow background and put some of his favorite colors on him. Like he loves wearing black hats. So I gave him a black hat, red shirt because he loves that as well. And I wanted to give him like white teeth, a pink tongue, everything that goes natural with um, his body language. As you can see, he's smiling because he loves to smile. He likes everybody to have a good time whenever he's in the room. Yeah, he's a swell dude. <laughs> you, would love, you would love to meet him if you ever met him. This is my crystal Sonic the Hedgehog. I created this in Adobe Illustrator. All it is is basically a bunch of squares and triangles in the shape of Sonic the Hedgehog. And I used a gradient tool with his colors in order to give it that little awesome crystal effect, make it look like he's made of glass. And I really enjoyed doing this one because it took a long time because I had to make sure every square and triangle was lined up correctly to make his image, but not make it look weird. This is my company logo. One day I really want to make my own company, not just work for another company for the rest of my life. I want to make my own. That way people can come to me and want there are designs to be made by not only me, but also other people that probably work for me as well. And this would be the logo that I would like to have. It's my, it's the letter of my first name, Lawan, and the cursive, along with the four colors, blue, red, cyan, and magenta, or purple, or whatever you want to choose. And I chose those colors because those four are my favorite colors to use. I really love using like colorful tones whenever I make art because they show lots of emotion that you wouldn't normally expect or see in like something as simple as black and white. I like to use lots of colors whenever I create things. This is a mock-up of my single page website. I put it on these Apple products because, well, a lot of people use Apple products nowadays. So I thought, man, this will be great to go on there. It was a single page website of the band Crush 40. They make the music for Sonic the Hedgehog was as you saw their Crystal Sonic before. You should know by now, Sonic is one of my favorite characters. I love the guy so much. So I decided to create a single page website of their music of Crush 40. And this is the little mock-up of it. If you like, if it was real, you could scroll down, see the music and YouTube videos and everything. This is a 3D model of an air traffic control tower. We were um, one day in class, we had got this as a project 
and I chose this one because I didn't know anything about air traffic control towers until I looked them all up and I just wanted to find one that I thought was very interesting. This was the one that I chose and I really enjoyed the way it came out. It took a lot of polygons. I will say that lots and lots of polygons, but it worked out in the very end. This is a wedding ring. I decided to make one just because I really like the design of most wedding rings, not just like the simple round one that goes around your finger. I wanted to do one with that bends around each other, bends and curves, as you can see on the left with the blue diamonds on the inside. And I want to put a blue diamond on the inside as well, the big one, because like I said before, blue is one of my favorite colors and I think blue diamonds look really good. This is a gun model of a Desert Eagle. This is one of the more complicated projects because I've never designed a gun before, but I really enjoyed doing it. And I decided to paint it gold and black because, well, gold is really neat to look at, especially if you put it at a certain angle with certain lights on it in Maya, it looks really good. So I went with this angle because it shows more of that gold texture. This is a speed board, as I like to call it. It's, a, it's basically a skateboard, but it has that lower angle as the skateboarders call it. They call them the speed boards because they get more speed on these than normal skateboards. I used a marble texture for the board itself and simple red wheels in order to match the color of the red and white marble. This is my alien. His name is Kyle. <laughs> Say hi to Kyle. He's um he was made in mud box. And that's why he has such a big head, small fingers, small feet. And um used there in order to, you know, expand the mud, as I would like to say, in mud box. And then I brought him into Maya to give him his little gadgets, like his jet pad and his little feet boosters and the little blasters on his hands. Now I'm going to show you what I call the Millennium Items. They come from the anime Yu-Gi-Oh. So if you want reference for that, you can look up Yu-Gi-Oh Millennium Items or just type in Millennium Items and you will find these picks to compare. This is the Millennium Puzzle, one of the main ones you will see in the show that belongs to Yu-Gi, the main character. This is made, these were all made in Maya and I gave them all the gold texture like with the Desert Eagle, except this one is more, you know, crisp, more clean because I learned how to do it a lot better after the gun. So this is the puzzle from this angle. I really like this angle. It really, you know, dynamically shows that around the eye. This is the Millennium Ring, and I know you're probably thinking, wait, why is that called a ring? That should be a necklace. There, that already exists. I don't know. If you got a problem with that, you can ask the showrunners. But this is the Millennium Ring. This is the more one of the more detailed ver you know, Millennium items. I really like this one the most because I thought that this one with all the with all the items and pieces that I had to put together to make it look so good, I really enjoy how it came out at the very end. This is the Millennium Key, one of the simpler items. It's mostly just, you know, just the key itself. Also, once again, in Maya, gold texture. And this is the Millennium Eye. Once again, one of the simpler ones. It's the eye piece you know, on a little spherical shape, gold texture, just as everything else. And I chose this angle because, well, it looks right at you no matter where you move, it's gonna follow you. Now I'm gonna show you the realistic hand that I created in Maya with angles. This isn't the only angle I have. This is one angle. Here is the next angle from the top. And here is the next angle from the bottom where you can see the finger joints where they would curve. I really enjoyed making this one because at the very end, I didn't think I could make something so realistic. And it was really neat. And it was awesome that I created something like this and 
that made me really want to keep going in Maya to create more realistic things because I realized at that moment I can do this I can create things like this and I shouldn't doubt myself or anything that I can't do it I really can now next I'm going to show you two animations that I have created the first one would be a diamond that will catch fire Now the next one, I'm just gonna show you a small animation of, tem of temple pillars rising with, with the diamonds coming down from the roof. These were all created in Maya, as I said before. Just, and they're just all small, simple animations that I wanted to put together and create because I wanted to try my hand at animation, not just graphic design and modeling. So thank you all for listening. Down below are my social medias that I am more active on, Facebook and Twitter, as well as my LinkedIn and my personal website. You can contact me there. Ask me, do you want me to create anything for you? Or if you just want to ask me some questions about any other work that I have, I'll be more than happy to answer. So as I said before, thank you for listening and have a good day.